Welcome back. Right, sorry for the recent lack of content. There's um, been a lot going on. This cylinder off of the uh, SR125, <clears throat> the Grand Challenge bike, has been off with a machine shop. Um, unfortunately, they haven't managed to do anything with it, but I'll cover that in a second. I wanted to put out a video today just to show you um, at home what you can do to determine whether your cylinder and your piston are the problem if you're burning oil to determine if you need a rebore or to replace the piston or if your rings are dead. Now I'm going to preface this with, I'm not a machine shop, I've never trained at a machine shop, I'm an idiot with a micrometer and some uh, ball measuring tools. This is the very rough end of engineering to let you know whether you need to take this and send it to a proper place or not. Because it can be an expensive prospect to do it just because, so figure out what you need first. I'm sure any reputable engineering shop will appreciate if you can send them rough figures just so they know what they're getting into. They can advise you better whether you just need a rebore or whether you might need um, a reline. So this liner taken out and a new one putting in. So without further ado, um, how do we measure stuff? So first of all, refer to the workshop manual for your engine or your bike or your car if you've got it. That is going to give you the, um, shall we say, absolute most proper way to do it the yamaha manual for this bike is honestly a little bit shed mechanics but with the piece of cardboard of truth um i can show you what they're asking you to do so they specified figures um d and they tell you to measure d by measuring what you can see here plus an average now what you can see here this is the cylinder and they ask you to measure the bore across this way and across this way at three points starting with one that's uh, 50 mil down and then carrying on. Then you average these together in a way that tells you not only whether the <clears throat> bore is worn out, whether it's started to go in like this or out like this, or whether it's barreled, so whether it goes in and out as it goes down. And on the piston, they tell you to measure five mil down on this part of the skirt. So here to here with the micrometer. So without further ado, let's <clears throat> show you how we do that. We'll start with the piston first. This is a cheapo micrometer. There's an amazing video on YouTube somewhere that tells you why cheapo micrometers like this are good. Or at least why they're good enough for you and me. Um, I've got the calibrating bar in. <clears throat> I'm as close as is going to make any difference. And for the first one, I'm just going to set the piston in the bore. And I'm going to use the big wheel on the micrometer. So I know this is somewhere out near 57 so i can use the course control on the ends to get close and then five mil down on both sides and i'm going to use the big wheel on the micrometer that has a, a clicker in it so that i can't over tighten it and mess up the reading and i'm just going to take that reading in a few spots so that i can see that it's roughly coming out the same every time and i'm going to settle on 57.440 uh, for the piston and write that down. Now I happen to know that's grossly out of spec, the skirts on this piston are worn, and uh, if you just take a look, your eyes can tell you that. They're all scuffed up and, uh, and beaten up and there's associated wear marks inside this ball. So that's the piston. Next of all, we'll do the cylinder, and um, this is nominally 57 mil. So I'm going to need some of these which are, there's two ways to measure a cylinder. There's the fancy way with a proper bore measuring um, micrometer, or there is the transference method using these dirt cheap things. They're not going to be super precise, but like I said, this is about getting us most of the way there, um, so we know whether we need a machine shop. These things can be had for dirt cheap. I have a little thing here. When you loosen it, these become springy. When you tighten it, they stop. Bear in mind, any play that you are um, gaining here is going to be in your measurements as well. But the rough idea is you squeeze them together, you try and keep this parallel to the ball. Um, you find those spots that we mentioned, so we're going to do one like this and one like this. Um, but first, and I don't care about the surface of this, just to be clear, I'm going to get this in, wiggle it a little bit, get it straight, tighten it off. And it should just pull back out easily. And the idea is now that we can take this, get this out of the way, pop it in the micrometer. 
and being careful to align it properly, close this down so that we get a reading. And that reading is in theory uh, D1 that I just showed you. So we can write that down 57.520. And then we can go ahead and take the opposite reading 90 degrees out. at the same depth and I'm not doing this particularly precisely because I'm on camera so these numbers might be absolute trash 57.508 and what we're going to do then is um, continue down with this tool so we've done 50 mil in then we're going to do uh, whatever the next measurement is and then the last one and once we've got all of those figures I'll put up on screen here the um, workshop manuals maths for it we can calculate what size everything is and whether it needs to be replaced now I happen to know that this absolutely does need some work I sent it off to a machine shop big shout out to Antique Engineering in Gloucester they had a look at it they could do the work um, but the thing that we've been struggling to find is a piston both I, them, and a couple of other engineering shops have really struggled to find a piston for this. So this is on its second oversize. And if we talk about oversizes a bit, um, when your engine is made, this one nominally, this is 57 mil. Over time, it's going to wear out. And the cure to that, as you can see, there's a lot of meat here, is what's called a rebore. So you take some out, refinish it, and you put a bigger piston in. Those bigger pistons come in standard sizes from the manufacturer called oversizes. So this is a 57, a 57.25 is the first oversize for this engine. 57.5 is the second oversize and one mil oversize or 58 mil is the final oversize. This has already been done before. Um, it's probably only been bored out once, but quite often if you damage it enough, you'll have to go two oversizes up. So we can actually see on the piston at uh, 0 0.5 which means we're already on the second oversize i can get another one of these pistons and rings for it but what i cannot find uh, for love nor money is a one millimeter oversized piston so that would mean re-sleeving this which would mean drilling out this entire thing and then putting a new iron sleeve in it that's an expensive process that i do not want to undertake on a bike that costs 280 quid so I'm keeping my ears to the ground um, to see if there are any of these for sale, asking eBay sellers if they can do some measurements, um, just basic ones. If you want to know the rough diameter of this, you really don't need to do all of this. You just need a set of calipers, stick them in, measure across. You might even get away with a really good engineer's ruler, but I've been asking eBay sellers if they can measure. You can imagine the kind of replies that I'm getting to see if I can find one of these that hasn't been bored out so that I can buy one of the lower oversized pistons and have the machine shop bore it out for me. However, in the meantime, um, I'm not going to rebuild the bike because there's not much point in wasting the gaskets. But in the meantime, I'm keeping my eyes out for any other solutions that might be out there. Um, I've heard rumours of there being big bore kits for this engine, which is kind of hilarious for a 125. So that's an option. Basically, I just need anything that's going to get a cylinder and piston that can be used to make the bike run and move down the road. Um, because I've seen recently on the Grand Challenge group that there is an event coming up. As of today, that's not this weekend. Today's a Friday. It's the weekend after. So I've got a week to figure something out, rebuild the engine. And of course, with this all being new when it's rebuilt, run it in as well. Um, before potentially doing something like 400 miles. So wish me luck. Uh, I'm going to throw back to Studio Me um, and I'm going to put up some of that Yamaha um, service manual information about what all these measurements mean and maybe we'll go through and do the maths. Okay, back in the studio, I'm going to try and keep this easy. Um, if you look up on the top left hand side of the screen, you can see where the measurements are defined in the service manual. And on the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see the measurements I took um, in accordance with that. So those give us our D1 through 6 measurements that are at 90 degrees to each other, stepped down the cylinder in thirds. Um, 
from those measurements we can then use the maths that are in the middle on the left hand side to calculate the bore taper and out of round measurements which you can see I've done up at the top there um, and then finally taking into account the piston measurements which you can see on the top right I've done three measurements in roughly the same spot uh, just because I don't trust my method and average them together you can take those along with the diameter measurement um, and that gives us the clearance measurement which is the gap between the piston and the cylinder and so you can see also on the left hand side at the beginning of the chapter in this manual which you can't see here um, there are some specifications and we are outside of them in this case the method is going to differ by bike by engine you know even if you're working on a car um, these tolerances seem insignificant so you look at these and you say what's 0 0.02 millimeters between friends that's enough play that when this piston is in the ball um, with your fingers you can knock it backwards and forwards and it makes quite an unpleasant sound which you can actually hear when the engine is running these things work on really quite tight tolerances so what the manual says goes um, and if you're out of spec with a manual and you're burning oil which we are and we are it can be a fairly safe bet that that's why there's a few things if we couldn't get hold of any spare parts that we might um, try here a new set of rings maybe rings that are slightly bigger and then file the gaps down we haven't talked about measuring ring gap but we'll do that when we rebuild the engine um, but you know maybe a fresh set of rings you could even put a new piston in here with new rings same size um, and it might cure the issue for a little while but that would really be a, a sticky plaster because with the out of roundness of the cylinder the piston is just going to move within that cylinder and end up causing the exact same kind of issues um, where it had previously rocked side to side and bashed up the skirts it's going to continue to do that and so instead of getting a couple of tens of thousands of miles out of a piston especially in a 125 where it's running hard and hot all the time we might only get a couple of thousand miles and it's probably not worth the fuss of rebuilding it just for that so that's where we stand that's what's gone on with this engine um, I'm going to go away and continue trying to find parts. We're getting really close to the deadline now for the next Grand Challenge event, so I'm desperately hoping I can get something sorted out in time um, because I'd like to attend and uh, have a go at that. But watch this space. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Peace. Just for those who wanted to see just how worn out this is, <laughs> that's how worn out those rings weren't seated properly. And... Um, if I pick it up, you might be able to see the gap around the outside of this piston. I'm rocking it now with my fingers, but there's a distinct click-click. So, um, very definitely out of spec. And really easy to move. 